If you haven't heard the news, Jabari Smith was in town on Thursday. We'll break down what we learned about him during his workout or after his workout with the Orlando Magic. Plus, we'll hear directly from Jabari Smith with the full uh, media availability uh, after his workout, as we'll try to do with all the top picks as they come through. It's time for a Friday edition of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is June 10th, 2022. My name is Philip Rosenreich. I'm the expert and site editor over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, it's all about Jabari Smith Jr., the Auburn Ford in Orlando for a his first workout for the Orlando Magic's first workout of the top three guys, at least that we know of. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what uh, we learned about Jabari Smith during this workout. We'll hear from Jabari Smith, uh, and then we'll start spinning it forward and start thinking about what it all means for the team and really kind of globally of uh, the impression that the Magic seem to be giving. Before we get to any of that, though, I want to thank you all again for making Lockdown Magic part of your day every day. No matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, we truly appreciate you making Lockdown Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Lockdown podcast Covering all the teams in the NBA, just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. The Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. At this point, we have talked a lot about Jabari Smith. We obviously did an interview uh, last week, or two weeks ago now, uh, with Zach Blackerby of Locked On Auburn. I definitely suggest you go back into our archives, whether on the podcast, whether on YouTube. Go check out that that interview, that discussion, really good stuff from him. Um we kind of know Jabari Smith's game inside and out. Um, you know, average, what, 16 points per game, a little bit more than 16 points per game. Um, great, a 42% three-point shooter. Solid rebounder, around seven rebounds per game. Great defender. We, we know all these things about him. Uh, the, 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 rap, you know, we, the rap on Jabari Smith is that he is already an NBA capable NBA level defender. He is already or should be a, a great three point shooter. Shot 79% from the foul line, which is certainly a, a good number to translate to his three point shot. Um this is a guy that at the very least, and, and I think this is a really important point to make too, at the very least, at his baseline, he should be a great three and D wing player here in the NBA. Um, at, at, at the very worst, that's what he's going to give a team. Um, and again, I don't think he should be drafting a guy based off of his floor, certainly not with the first pick. Um, but if that's his floor, and, and I would say among the top three guys, I think Jabari Smith has the highest floor, he also has the highest ceiling. Smith was used largely as a three-point shooter. About five and a half of his 12 field goal attempts per game uh, were three-pointers. So he was a great three-point shooter, but it's how he got some of those threes that's really impressive, too. He did step-backs. He did pull-ups. He did all those little dribble moves that you like to see. But there's other parts of his game, too, that are really interesting and, and, and are worth exploring as well. He's great in the mid, mid and low post, especially when guarded by smaller defenders. He is great at getting his own shot, has a great turnaround fadeaway game, has a great kind of step-back game uh, in the mid-range as well. So he has all the kind of scoring elements to be a star. The knocks on him, of course, are that he didn't really create his own shot a lot in college outside of kind of dribble moves and uh, outside of those kind of short dribble moves and jab steps in the, in the mid post. Um, he wasn't very good at getting to the rim. He shot less than 50. Per, he shot like 42. I think he's also 42% on two pointers, which again, suggests how heavy his three point usage was. Was it really about getting to the line? Was it really about getting to the basket? And these are all areas that Jabari Smith will have to improve upon. Um, a lot of even his fans would say, yes, there's there's a little bit of a struggle to create his own space and get his shot. And, and, and he relies heavily on his length to get his shot off off over smaller defenders. But again, kind of like Kevin Durant, I think maybe Kevin, I, Kevin Durant was better at getting to the basket um, at Texas. But like Kevin Durant, I think that was a criticism of him was that, oh, he just 
kind of turns around and shoots over people. And it's like, yeah, he's seven foot and can do that. Um, Jabari Smith checks all the boxes at the Magic Like. Physically, uh, skill-wise, he's got a lot. And, and, and the more I watch him, the more I am convinced that that he has all the elements and all the tools to be a really great player. Um, I, I have really settled in that Jabari Smith is most likely going to be the pick. I, I agree that he is the betting favorite uh, to be the number one pick. Of course, we'll have to, the Magic will continue to go through their process. We are expecting that Chet Holmgren will make an appearance in Orlando sometime next week. So if we know his skills, if we know who Jabari Smith is as a player, the question then becomes, who is he as a person? And, and, and that's really what these workouts, that's really what this session that the Magic had on Thursday that's what really all these workouts are about. They are a job interview. You think about whenever you've had to get a job. Um, you send your resume in. They know your qualifications. They bring you in for an interview to figure out if you're a good fit personality-wise for their team, for their culture, for uh, their company. And that's what – it's really it's really critical, I think, to think of these workouts – as that shirt, sure, there is a little bit of a test, and, and, and certainly they want to test the physicality. They, but that test is more about, let's see how you receive coaching. We're going to get you with our head coach. He's going to run you through a drill. We'll see how quickly you could pick that up. It's all about mental makeup. And, and, and that's, that's really, I think, the big takeaway that I had from Jabari Smith. Um, Zach Blackerby talked about this. Uh, talked about this a lot, actually, in our conversation with him uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, Jabari Smith is a guy that is driven to win. And, and I would say, and you'll see this when we, we when we roll the tape on, on, on Jabari here, Jabari Smith definitely seems a little shy. He definitely seemed a little gun-shy around the media, which is fair. It's, it's, it was his first interview, said it was really nervous. You know, there's a lot of attention on him. But I, I would note that, and I, and I felt this way, that that when he talked about himself and how good he thinks he can be, that it's not an ego thing. I don't think he was bragging about it. But I, I really felt like he has this really calm confidence about how good he can be and what his goals are. He said his goal is to win a championship. And he will do whatever his team asks him to do to win that championship. Now, certainly some of that is, okay, you've been coached to say this a little bit. Um, you've been coached to say that this is what I want to do or this this is the right answer to give. This is what these teams want to hear. And for sure, I will say that is exactly what I want to hear. That is exactly what this that, that, that we need to hear from a guy who's going to be the number one pick in the draft. But, and again, I, th- I think you will hear this when, when, when we listen to Jabari here. Um, he really, it's not that he really believes it. It's that he is about it. Um, you know, again, Zach Blackerby from Locked on Auburn told us that no one worked harder than Jabari Smith at Auburn. Um, he was someone that was really driven to help his team win and do whatever his team asked him to do. Most importantly, do whatever his team asked him to do. And that was the other part of the equation here. The sense was Jabari Smith does not care if he is the top scorer. Uh, He even said it. I don't care if I score 30 or I don't care if I score 10 as long as my team wins. And that kind of selflessness is, is really valuable, especially from a star, especially from a guy you hope will be a star. To, the, the, the humility to understand I am part of the bigger whole and to be about that. Now, of course, the, 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 the proof will be in the pudding. The proof will be in exactly how it all plays out and, and, how, and how Jabari actually fits in with his team. I would argue my, uh, one of my other big takeaways uh, from what we heard from Jabari is that you're going to probably have to coax stardom out of him a little bit. And I think that was a little bit of a struggle at Auburn. Yes, he was a leading scorer. Yes, he was a really important player for that team. Yes, he had some really big moments and really big stretches where he burned off a bunch of points and kept Auburn in a lot of games. Um, I think that's a really underrated part of the conversation that we haven't had is Jabari Smith will go through spurts. He will hit three, two, three threes in a row and completely change the momentum of games as your best player. 
Magic have really relied on Terrence Ross to do a lot of that. Um, Jabari, Jabari Smith, though, you'll have to kind of, I think you will have to kind of coax that kind of understanding of when it's his time to attack, when it's his time to be the guy. Of course, I, I think that's a difficult thing to to coax out of any 19, 20-year-old. It's, it's, it's hard to remember sometimes that these guys are super, super, super young. But to me, Jabari Smith was a, a really impressive guy to talk to, uh, and, and, and of course, a, a really, really impressive talent and a guy that, that I think Magic fans are going to be really excited to get to know and learn a little bit more about here in the last two weeks before the NBA draft. I'm going to let you judge for yourself. We'll talk a little bit about uh, what the impressions of are of the Orlando Magic and, and why, again, this this feels a little bit different than our, their, our typical rebuild. We'll hear from Jabari Smith next and then talk a little bit about that coming up here in just a moment. But first, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, the NHL Hockey Conference Finals, Major League Baseball, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. Don't forget, before we hear from Jabari Smith, the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft starts June 16th. With more than 50 insiders, nothing equals the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft, the Locked On NBA Big Board Draft Experts, plus the Odyssey Insiders. The first pick, that's me, is June 16th. Search Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and follow now so you don't miss a pick. We'll come right back here with Jabari Smith Jr.'s media availability after his workout on Thursday. When you look at this draft and you know, all the analysis and everything else, the consensus pretty much is that the best combination of shooting and defense in this draft is you. One, do you agree with that? And two, do you think it's the combination of those two things that set you apart, or is there something else that you think sets you apart? I definitely agree that I'm the, the best combination of those two, and I just think it's my will to win that sets me apart. I don't really care about stats and glamour and all that. I just want to really win and play to win every time, every game. So that's it. I, th- I think that's what separates me. What was this process like today for you? Was, was were you my, nervous at all even? Uh, if I said I wasn't nervous, I'd be lying. So I think I, I think coming into it, it was nervous. But going into it and everybody talking to me and just getting me through it kind of relaxed me a little bit. And just They just said have some fun with it. So that's what I tried to do. And, um, you know, it was, it was my first workout, so the first experience that I'll never forget, really. So, you know, it was it was fun to get out here, push myself, and, and get through it. When you walk in here, can you see this being home? Uh, I definitely can. You know, like, even when I'm finishing working out, like, the guys coming up to me, talking to me, like, that, that, that means a lot to me. Like, you know, they're not just walking past me and you know, treating me like I'm just, you know, another dude working out. You know, they're shaking my hand, telling me to go work and all that. So it means a lot to me. You mentioned that this was your first workout. Did you meet with the Magic at the Combine? Uh, no, I did not. I only met with the um, with the Thunder, but um, we wasn't able to able to meet. It just didn't work out. So we, we said that we was going to meet when I uh, came down to work out. So. so I guess what are your impressions of the people that you have been able to meet? You know, Jeff, John, you uh-huh. know, the player, you know, yeah. players that you see around here? Uh, we had great conversations, you know, just talking about the league in general, how the league is changing, you know, um, uh, expectations I see myself doing in the league and, and what I can see myself being. So we had some good talks and good laughs and, Stories talking about my dad, and you know, just just stories about our our our, our world of basketball. I know it's been you know been some years since your dad was in the process, but has he given you any advice? You know, any tips uh, about this? <laughs> no, it's been a minute for yeah, him. He has. He he given me a lot of advice. You know, basically everything I know. You know, just always telling me to always have fun with it and and um, give it my all. You know, basketball gonna be taken away from me sooner or later. So just having fun with it and. And, and enjoying it, you know, not doing it for the glamours and the, and the cameras, just doing it for the love of the game and, 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 and to win. Jabari, each year guys come into the league and mm-hmm. they show some things that maybe they didn't necessarily show in college. For you in particular, what, what are some of the things that you think you'll be able to show in the, in the league that maybe you dish, didn't necessarily show at the collegiate level? Uh, I think I'll be able to show my passing ability, you know, my ability to make the right play and not, um, not settle for tough shots. And I think my shot selection will improve a lot at the next level with just making the right pass, uh, playing out of ball screens, and just, you know, making the right reads. Why do you feel you should be the number one pick in the draft? Um, like you said, I just feel like my will to win 
and I just I, I can do so much. Like I feel like I can come in right away and just make an instant impact to any team with my shooting ability, my ability to play defense, and just and just like all of it, like the ability to play defense, get a rebound and push it, um, ability to guard multiple positions. I feel like that separates me from a lot of people. When you think about this roster, how well do you feel you'll fit in with it? And do you feel like you could take this team to the next level? Um, I think I can fit in really well. You know, just seeing seeing the guys and seeing the players, like this is a young team, one of the youngest in the league. So adding me would just add another another young player who's hungry and, 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 and got a lot left in the tank. You know what I mean? So I'll add some energy and just some another person who wants to come in and work and just get his organization where it needs to be. How much just being the number one? Will there, be, will there be others? Uh, yes, I have one more workout with OKC, and uh, that would be it. Okay. How much does being the number one pick matter to you? I, guess. Um, I think it matters a lot, you know, with, with, with the names that have been the number one pick, and, you know, um, just the expectations and the pressure that comes with it. I think I'm ready for it, and I think it means a lot to me. Jabari, I don't know if last year you were able to watch many of the Magic games, you know, with everything you mm -hmm. had going on, but kind of from what you've seen, what have your impressions mm -hmm. been of this team and this organization? Um, I say the games that I do watch, I watch a lot of NBA games, and the games that I did watch of them, I could tell how much fun they were having, no matter the record or like um, the struggles they faced this season. It never looked like, you, you'll never guess that their record was what it was, you know what I mean? Like just watching them play and like the joy they had, it, you'll think they're playing a the game seven of the finals like every game, you know what I mean? Like they're playing to win every game. Nobody's like moping around because it's a tough season. It's like everybody's still got that pop and that energy. So it was good to see that. Um, in this team. Is there a player in the league that you compare yourself to stylistically? Um, it'll, it'll be hard for me to choose one player because I try to take something from everybody. But I like to watch, you know, guys who can do a lot, like Giannis on the defensive end, you know, like Jason Tatum, um, Kevin Durant, of course, just watching people who can just do a lot, you know, who are not limited and uh, have a lot of a lot of stuff to their game. It's obviously been three months since since the college season ended. What what have you been focusing on? You know, as you're preparing for the mm -hmm. draft, what have you been focusing on to improve and kind of show teams? As you know, you talked about a little bit about passing ability, but what have you been focusing on trying to show teams as you're getting ready for the draft process for the next season? Um, basically, just um, trying to get my body right, getting in shape, getting stronger. You know, because as you see the the NBA level, you got to be in a different type of shape and a different type of physicality, and your body has to be in a different type of a different type of level. So just. I would say that for the most part, you know, ball handling and just keeping my skills sharp, you know, just working on stuff that I would do in a game and I would use in a game. Uh, we've uh, here in Orlando, we've obviously seen uh, how good how good Auburn can be with 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 Chuma. What was the biggest thing that, that you learned from from your year from your year at Auburn from your year in college? Um, I would say like relationships. I would say like off the court, like basketball fun. You know, don't don't take it for granted. Like college was just a a great experience for me in general. Like I made brothers that. That's a lifetime. I met coaches that I'll talk to for the rest of my life. So it's just, I would say from the outside, I would say that, you know, like just how short I was at Auburn and how much I'm connected to Auburn is just was a big deal for me. So I would just say relationships and how important it is to build relationships with your teammates and how it would translate to the court. Jory, do you have previous relationships with any of the guys here? I would imagine Chuma. Um, you know, yeah, with Chuma and Wendell being from Georgia, you know, I watched them when I was in high school, when I was in middle school coming up, watching them play and then watching them in college, you know, it's, it's obvious for me to look up to them and, and you know, watch them as, as, th as they come from where I'm from. You know, it's easy for me to watch them and, and, and just be happy for them. What do you think about Coach Mosley? What were your impressions of him? Um, real in detail, you know what I mean? Really, really watching me and not only was he, was he trying to um, give me tips to help me get to the workout, but he was also pushing me and, and, and telling me to do different things and not react to certain things. You know, I'm my toughest critic, so if I'm missing, I'm just real. I'm a, I'm real hard on myself, but you know he's telling me just don't worry about it. You know, treat it like you're back at home working out. So that's what I try to do. When you watch the finals right now, are you watching them as a basketball fan, mm -hmm. or are you watching them as the realization of I'm gonna be playing against these guys uh -huh. in about three months? Um, is, are you, or is it kind of both? Uh, kind of both. You know what I mean? I kind of watch situations and see where I can see myself in, in certain situations. Watch players and see what I would have did in certain situations. Just trying to see where I can fit in and see where I see myself dominating in this league. It seemed like half the roster was here to watch you uh, be here in the gym. What does that kind of mean to you to, to have those guys here watching you? Um, like I said, it means a lot. And you know, they're all here for a reason to, you know, go in there and work out. So it's like teams usually don't have half of their team still at home around this time. So it's just like, that, that, that means something. You know, they're real hungry and real, real close to teams like so. 
you see they're trying to trying to work and get to that next level. Jabari, you went through all these meetings and everything with these teams. What do you want them when you leave to know about you? What do you want their takeaway to be about Jabari Smith Jr.? Um, I want it to be that um, I'm a team player. Like I'm not worried about stats or, or accolades and nothing like that. I really just like my main goal in life is to win is to win the NBA championship. So that's just that's just what I want to do and that's my goal. No matter if I average 30, no matter if I average 10, like that's just what I want to do. Whatever a team needs me to do to, to impact winning, that's what I do. No, you said that you only interview with OKC back at the combine. Mm -hmm. you, you haven't in, uh, worked out for them yet, but has there was there anything about the process, you know, with the Magic from a working mm -hmm. out or just interview standpoint mm -hmm. that stood out with you? Um, I would say just how how happy everybody is. You know, you don't see that everywhere you go. Like even on college visits, you can see some assistants don't. Some people don't talk, but it seems like everybody interacts. Everybody's around the facility laughing, you know, joking around, you know, getting their work done. But it just seems like everybody's so together. And that's what kind of stood out with me when I chose Auburn. Like, it just seems like a family around here, and, and, and it's noticeable. Has it hit you yet that this is a job now? This is a business now. You're going to yeah. have off-court decisions to make, uh -huh. choose stuff. I mean, all sorts of deals are going to get mm -hmm. thrown your way, however it goes in a couple weeks. Um, Has that? How do you balance all that? Or are you blocking all that kind of out right now? Um, I have a good support staff with me. I got my dad who's been through everything that I'm going through. So it's good to have him with me and just help me get through it. And, and him telling me that my main focus is basketball right now. You know, don't worry about the shoe stuff will come. And I got people to handle that. And, and you know, at the end of the day, it's my decision. But I got people to, 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 to handle that side. And he just wants me to focus on the court and just focus on getting better. I want to thank you, Jabari Smith and, of course, the Orlando Magic uh, for uh, making him available after the interview. We're going to talk a little about some of those points about the uh, Magic as an organization, as a team, coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word for our pals at Sakara. Feeling your best starts with what you eat. Sakara helps you live a healthy, balanced lifestyle and truly enjoy it with delicious, plant-rich transformational nutrition that builds a foundation for living your best body. Sakara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. Sakara gives you the tools you need to transform your life with their organic, ready-to-eat meal delivery program and functional wellness essentials. Their nutritionally designed, chef-crafted breakfast, lunches, and dinners are made with powerful plant-rich ingredients, helping boost your energy, support your digestion, curb your sugar cravings, and get your skin glowing. Plus, it's all delivered right to your door, ready to eat. Sakara's functional plant-rich wellness essentials help you create a body you love living in from their best-selling metabolism super powder to the foundation, their daily supplement packs. Sakara's products are designed to support your wellness goals anytime, anywhere. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash locked on 20 or enter code locked on 20 at checkout. That's Sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash locked on 20 to get 20% off your first order. Again, sakara.com slash locked on 20. So one of the big takeaways that I had um, from that chat with Jabari Smith um, was really his impression of the Magic as an organization and, and as a team. Um, these, especially now that the Magic have the number one pick, these visits are essentially like free agent visits. These visits are meant to showcase, you know, what the franchise is about. Now, obviously, like I compare this to a job interview, this isn't a typical job interview. When, when you're on a job interview, they're, you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. Um, you know, obviously, there may be a little bit of a power imbalance because you might need the job, but um, you're, you're trying to figure out if this is the right fit for you too. And, and to some extent, I think that's still the case, especially with how agents control a lot of the narrative. But this, the Magic are getting ready for a big free agent summer, potential to – they have money to spend if they want to spend it. They're trying to build a culture and an organizational identity um, that kind of seeps through the walls, so to speak, uh, when people enter the building. And so uh, in that sense – it is very good to hear how Jabari Smith felt like the Magic made an impression on him. The fact that so many guys were in the building, getting ready to work out, um, you know, going up to Jabari and chatting with him a little bit uh, was a really positive sign. While, while the media was out in the hallway waiting for 
the workout to end, we saw, you know, Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Mo Wagner, Franz Wagner, Mo Bamba, uh, Jonathan Isaac all came through, and I'm sure there were more guys in the back um, getting themselves ready for their daily workout. Um, you know, I think usually the Magic tell everyone, hey, there, there's a draft workout going on at this time. Jim is off limits then. Come, af- come after around around 12, 30, 1 o'clock, whatever. Um, but, that, but there's a lot of guys in that building. And Jabari Smith, as he said there, said in that in that interview, said when he watched the Magic play, it didn't feel like they were a twenty win team. It felt like they were playing with a lot of purpose. It felt like they were playing with a lot of energy. It felt like they wanted to win. That they're putting in the work to win. They know the work that's ahead, uh, and they're putting in that work. And that's all what Orlando wants to be about right now. That that that's that's a good sign that that feeling is coming out. Now again, I'll put the caveat out there. I'll say it. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to say the right things here. You don't want to say the wrong things. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to be, uh, you know, bad mouthing the team that you're hoping will take you with the number one pick. Uh, certainly not publicly like that, uh, unless you really don't want to get picked by them. Um, but it goes with everything that we've seen about this Magic team over the last year, and really the culture that they're trying to build. Um, you know, Kobe Price of the Orlando Sentinel had a nice little little a- a- vignette about. Um, Jamal Mosley and Jabari Smith's interaction on the court. We know what Jamal Mosley is all about, and, and this is the kind of culture that he is really focused on and, and tried to build. And, and obviously, I think it's a good thing that we're seeing Orlando kind of be about this, kind of be this kind of team and, and be about this. And it's good to hear that that impression is making a mark on players who might one day join the team. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, follow us on Twitter at Locked On Magic. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Tune in, Himbley, Google Play, Spotify, Od- Spotify, Odyssey, all of the places on the podcast to your podcast enabled listening device. You can find me on Twitter at Philip R underscore Mean for the latest on the Orlando Magic. Be sure to check out Orlando Magic Daily.com. You can follow us there on Twitter at O Magic Daily. Now that you're done listening to us, be sure to check out the Locked On NBA Big Board. Host Rafael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies and author of the NBA Big Board newsletter is joined by Richard Stamen, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin giving fans an in-depth look into the NBA Draft, Mock Draft, Player Rankings, and of course, Big Boards. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. For Orlando Magic, Dale and Locked On Magic, this has been Philip Rossenreich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.